Let's take a look, first of all, at a little bit more detail. What exactly uh, do these five measures mean? Well, I think overall what we can say is this does mean there'll be more money in people's pockets. And of course, the big question is how much impact is that going to have? First of all, the 100 euro rise in uh, monthly rise in the minimum wage, uh, which at the moment is just below 1,200 euros uh, a month after tax, um, is described as a rise of 6%. I've seen some comments suggesting that this is bringing forward changes that would have happened uh, anyway. Uh, and that uh, it may not benefit everyone who's on that level, but it depends on the family situation or the particular status. It's all a bit complicated. The devil will be in the detail. One employer I've heard this morning say, well, what about those who earn just above the minimum wage? There's a bit of a trap there, uh, and, and that's an awful lot of workers. Uh, will they benefit? Uh, the planned uh, cancellation of the tax rise for low-income pensioners, which Macron said, self, himself said was unjustified, that could cost the state some 1.5 billion euros. It will put money in people's pockets and make a big difference. Um, but there are some question marks over future uh, pension rises, which may not be linked to inflation, so that means there still may be uh, problems ahead. Um, over time, getting rid of uh, charges and taxes, it's a bit like going back to under President Sarkozy's era, all that was stopped under uh, President Hollande. Again, big cost to the state. Um, will the employees seize the chance uh, uh, over that? Uh, but of course not everyone has the, the opportunity or wants to do over time. So how much effect will that have? The bonuses that Macron is encouraging employers to pay at the end of the year, is it too late for this year or will that be something for uh, next year? Uh, and finally, no reinstatement of the wealth tax, which is something that's got a lot of people's backs up. Well, Macron says we had the wealth tax for 40 years. Did it end people's frustration? He says no. Uh, incidentally, it wasn't actually completely cancelled under him. He didn't abandon it. He reinstated it. He, uh, it still exists for property owners. He reformed the wealth tax rather than actually uh, get rid of it. But that is still seen as something that's very uh, unfair uh, in the eyes of lots of people. That's yeah, so a lot of question marks over uh, how uh, all of these measures might be implemented and what they might mean. But um, what else was there in Macron's speech? Well, the final third of his speech was really about this sort of new social contract. He said government and parliament must go further. We have to end tax evasion. Big companies must pay more tax. We need a profound reform of the state, which is too centralised. People witness deteriorating public services around the country. The nation needs to look at uh, things like identity and immigration immigration, people's role in institutions. He wants to encourage a debate and he's going to go around meeting mayors region by region. Uh, he says this is a historic moment. He's calling for dialogue and respect uh, and he says he'll come back and be accountable to people. Now, will this work? Is this just, uh, uh, is this just big words effectively? There's little detail. Uh, a lot of people may take uh, a lot of convincing. It's worth noting that Macron's never really been that popular despite his landslide victory in 2017 at the election. He only got under a quarter of the vote in the first round. In the second round, he trounced Marine Le Pen because he was up against Le Pen. Even then, she got 10 million votes. It's striking how much he has become the personal focus for so much discontent, even though, as we know, this frustration actually dates back a lot longer than the 18 months he's been in power. Let's, uh, let's look ahead. Uh, what uh, does this mean now? Where do we go from here with the, uh, well, let's say, first of all, with the French economy? Well, the French economy, we've heard uh, Bruno Le Maire yesterday on Euronews, talking to Euronews, the, the French finance minister, saying it's a catastrophe, these protests so far, not just the damage they've done, but the suffering that this is causing uh, to businesses around the country. Um, the effect on the economy is that the growth forecasts uh, for the end of the year are forecast to drop, meaning that the government is way off target uh, for its end of the year uh, overall target. Um, the fifth wave of protests, of course, is still planned. The Gilets jaunes, the hardcore, still intend to go out onto the streets. The first straw polls we've seen are pretty negative. The question is what happens with the bulk of the other people that Annalise was talking about, the 72% that still support the movement in principle. But if the damage begins to hit, this is talk we're talking about real jobs uh, and, and real people. If they start beginning to suffer because of this, Will support for the Gilets jaunes drop or will the anger be even more channeled against President Macron himself?